is worthy hallelujah just lift your hands if you can in the presence of god hallelujah give the holy ghost worship hallelujah give jesus worship hallelujah hallelujah jesus 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 we need a move hallelujah jesus jesus we bless your name father hallelujah jesus jesus hallelujah glory hallelujah we need a move of the holy ghost we need you jesus lord we give you worship in this house today hallelujah we bless your name jesus we glorify your matchless name lord clap your hands for the lord jesus christ welcome to father's house one and all it's good to see you and thank you we're brave it to come some of you have to take the public transportation and put yourself at risk to be in god's house but remember god is no man's debtor hallelujah he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him hallelujah and god will bless your faithfulness god will protect you god will cover you god will provide for you god will see you through hallelujah god is a rewarder hallelujah he sees your faithfulness hallelujah and god hallelujah will bless you we give god thanks the song says we need a move and we thank the worship team for that song and interesting my topic is we need another pentecost we need another pentecost and have we lost the power can we regain the power we need another pentecost the book of acts chapter 2 section was read earlier but for emphasis verse 1 says and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as a spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven and when this was noise abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born father we humble our hearts before you today we thank you mighty god for this day which is called pentecost sunday and lord we thank you lord god that we're able to gather in this place lord god even as the disciples were gathered in the upper room and today mighty god we pray for a blessing in this house lord we pray, mighty God, for a new anointing in this house, Lord. We pray, mighty God, today somebody will be blessed. Hallelujah. Somebody, Lord God, will experience you in all your glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word as we humble our hearts before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands in his presence. As we reflect on Pentecost, the word Pentecost designates the 50th day after the Passover, which was a feast day. Some person might hear the expression Pentecostal Sunday or Pentecost Sunday. 
and wonder what it means. But Pentecost designate the 50th day after the Passover, which was a feast day, also known as the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest. So this goes back over into the Old Testament. In Exodus chapter 34 verse 22, it says, Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. And also referring to it again in Exodus 23 verse 16, the word of God says, and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. In the narrative of the Exodus, the Bible tells us that God help the children of Israel escape from their slavery in Egypt by inflicting 10 different plagues upon the ancient Egyptians before the Pharaoh would release the Israelite slaves or who those he enslaved. The tent and worst of the plague was the death of the Egyptians firstborn. The Israelites were instructed to mark the doorposts of their homes with the blood of a slaughtered spring lamb. And upon seeing this, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God, would know to pass over the firstborn in these homes. In the book of Acts, that the Holy Spirit was poured out on 120 believers, our followers of Christ, who were gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem. It was a day when the church was born. It was a day when the church of God was set ablaze with glory. And I want to say today, that we are privileged, we are living in a generation when God is again pouring out His Spirit in a mighty way, church. But I also believe that we need some more Pentecostal evidence and trait around us. We need another Pentecost. We need to experience another Pentecost. We need the rain of the Holy Spirit to fall on dry religious ground. We need to see a sweet refreshing of the Holy Ghost operating in many more lives. The Holy Spirit points to harvest. The Holy Ghost points to harvest and it's harvest time. The day of Pentecost uh, in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, the word of God says, uh, To whom also he shew himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. But in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, the word of God says, And being assembled together with them, Command them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Glory to God. But wait for the promise of the Father. Which say to ye, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So this was a promise. This was instruction. From Jesus Christ to the disciples. Jesus was with them for 40 days. Then ascended back to heaven. 10 days after the ascension. And 50 days 
after the resurrection. The words of Joel in, in Joel chapter 3 verse 18. The word of God says in Joel and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass in those days that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God that God sent his word through the prophet Joel. We thank God that the promise uh, was going to be fulfilled. And the promise uh, was fulfilled, hallelujah, in, in the book of Acts. In St. Matthew, the word of God says, Indeed, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost on fire. So John the Baptist speaking about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everything was lined up from in the Old Testament right down into the New Testament. Where it speaks that Jesus Christ was coming. John said, I baptize with water, but the one who comes after me is going to baptize you. He's going to cause you to be baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. And brethren, I'm saying we need another Holy Ghost fire. We need another Holy Ghost baptism. So many persons operating in the kingdom and neglecting the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is someone, uh, the, the person, the third person of the Godhead that you and I should be conscious of uh, daily. In our daily life, uh, we must be conscious. In the promise of Pentecost, in Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and 39, Peter replied, and said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promise is for you and for your children and for those who are far off. Hallelujah. The promise is for us today. No believer should, should be walking around without receiving that overflow of the Holy Ghost. Yes, when we get saved, we receive a portion of the Spirit of God. We receive a measure of the Spirit of God. But God wants us to draw closer in His presence where He pour out and we overflow and burst out. The disciples, they were told to tarry. They were told to wait. Wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from an eye hallelujah and thank god that they were obedient because god the holy ghost turn up hallelujah god the holy ghost showed up and the same disciples some of them who were timid some who were lacking in many areas when God the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them, their life was transformed. Everything about them was changed. God the Holy Ghost turned them around and they set the world ablaze. Preaching the gospel of peace. Preaching the gospel of deliverance. Preaching the gospel of healing. Preaching the gospel of conviction. Hallelujah. They weren't ordinary anymore. They were harmed and dangerous with the power of God. The Holy Spirit will make a difference in the life of the church. The Holy Ghost will make a difference in your life. The Holy Ghost will make a difference in my life. The Holy Ghost will make a difference in our life. As we examine what happened in the book of Acts, we see that they were united in purpose. For the Holy Ghost to turn up, we need to position ourselves. 
We need to position ourselves individually and collectively to receive of God. They were united in purpose. What word of God says? They waited on the Lord together. They united and wait together. This same trait should be the mark of the church today. In Philippians 1 verse 27, it says, we should strive together. The phrase means to work together as athletes. Stick together. We're a team. If you want to see God do something, we need unity. The church in Jerusalem, they were united, hallelujah, 120. They were on the same page. They were giving God thanks. They were glorifying God. You see, we, in the body of Christ, we have different functions, but we can be united. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, hallelujah, to profit with all. And so for, to one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And it continues and speaks about different person in the body receiving different gift. Hallelujah. But what? It's so that the body can function together as one. It's so that the body can operate as one. It is not to build up one person. It is to build up the body of Christ. We function as a body. And that was what was happening in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. They shout together. They sing together. They fast together. They pray together. They travail together. They feel each other burden together. Hallelujah. We need that unity in the body of Christ. There should be no ism and schism in the body. But that members, hallelujah, should care one for another. And where one member suffer, all members, hallelujah, suffer, hallelujah. Where one is honored, all is honored. Where one rejoice, all rejoice. Just read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and it tells you, hallelujah, that the body must function together as one. When we do that, we will see the power of God. We'll experience the power of God, hallelujah. We must pull together. In 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 it says whether therefore we eat or drink or what survey do do all to the glory of God can we glorify God together can we glorify God together we have different ideas and we're different individuals but we can bond together to defeat the enemy we can bond together to gain victory in the kingdom of God hallelujah we can walk together we can agree together so the Holy Ghost can move in our lives the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 1.10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. What an instruction from God. He says we should have the same mind. Hallelujah. When we are reading the same Bible. Hallelujah. We should have the mind of God. Hallelujah. When we are fasting together, we should be hearing from God together. Ephesians, Paul said in Ephesians, For he is our peace. What made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Glory to God. Having abolished in his flesh the, the enmity, even the law of commandments. Hallelujah. God is saying we must be one if we want to see the Holy Ghost move among us. As in the early church, we must be on the same page. The brethren in the book of Acts, they were united in prayer. They were united in prayer. 
One wasn't pulling east and one pulling west. Hallelujah. They prayed together. They prayed, hallelujah, for one another. Hallelujah. Praying together build unity, church. When we pray together, when we pray one for another, when we bond together, it builds unity. That's why Paul says in Galatians, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted. The word of God further instruct. The word says, bear ye one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, I love the word. I like to use the word and not my expression so much. For if a man think himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceive it. He deceive it. Hallelujah. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Glory to God. We need to pull together. Hallelujah. We are our brother's keeper. The word of God says uh, the brethren uh, in the early church, uh, they prayed together. Sometimes we pray against each other and pray what I call bad prayer. But God not answer those. God say, hey, come together. Pray for unity in the body. Hallelujah. Pray for growth. Pray for development. Pray for the success of your brother. Pray for the success of your sister. Pray for your brother's children. Pray for your sister's children. Pray that God will overtake them with blessing. We have to pray for each other. The church was united in power. The word of God says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You see, when you pull together, God will bless you together. Hey, when you do things together, God will bless us corporately. He knows how to pour out his blessing. God is not going to bless Mary and leave Jane. When we're pulling together, God is going to bless us as a family. The word didn't tell me that. A few of the brethren in the upper room was left out. No, tell me that they were all, glory to God. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The unity in the early church was remarkable. This unity produced amazing results. Hallelujah. When we are united, it produced results. They preached the same message. They believed the same things. They carry the same burden. They love the same things. Glory to God. What a unity in the body of Christ. What a unity in the early church. We need another Pentecost. We need to start being our brother's keeper again. We need to start praying together again. We need to tarry together again. Hallelujah. We need to know that we are there for our brother and our sister again. Hallelujah. It says in the early church, some of them usually sell their, their belonging and carry it and lay it at the, the apostles feet so that others could be blessed. We need the church to pull together the body of Christ must pull together if we want to see another Pentecost. Hallelujah. If we want to see the blind open their eyes and see again. If we want to hear the dumb start talking. If we want to hear the deaf start hearing. Hallelujah. In great and mighty numbers. We need unity in the body of Christ. Sometimes it amazes me. We preach from the same Bible and sometimes ten different doctrines out of one verse. We're not united. 
the church is so splintered hallelujah believers read one verse and have 10 different interpretation but we need a God we need a God of unity in our midst we need a God of unity we need a God to bring us together hallelujah the body of Christ must come together again the church of the living God must come together again if you want to experience what happened in the early church if you want a Pentecost if you want to see the world turn upside down for the glory of God they were united in performance they were all filled and they all began to speak hallelujah each person wasn't just doing their part but they were blessing each other hallelujah they weren't just focused on their thing but they're saying hey we're doing it together we want the anointing together we want the holy ghost together we want to be filled together we want to experience god together you see when you feel that you're weak trust god he will strengthen you but when you feel that you're strong and you see a brother struggling how can you help that brother and pull him up so that he can be strong too when you see a sister struggling hallelujah to make it in the faith how do you help that sister to come along hallelujah and to grow in the grace of god also sometimes when persons have the gifting and the anointing of god they feel so special as a boy it's all about them but god wants you to use your anointing to be a blessing to others glory to god your spirit of discernment God wants you to use it to build up the kingdom. Any gift or gifting that you may have is not for you only. Any gift or gifting that exists in any local church is not for you only. It's for the body of Christ. It's for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Each one help one. Hallelujah. So that we can be bigger. So that we can be stronger. So that we can be mightier. We need another Pentecost. In St. John 14 verse 16. The word of God says. And I will pray the father. And he will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. In verse 17 says, and even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. The word of God says, I will not leave you comfort, comfortless. I will come to you. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is still available for the church today. The anointing of God, the anointing which break yokes, is still available for the church of God today. God is saying, draw nigh unto me. Hallelujah. I want to pull you together. I want to unify the body. Body. I want to build up the body. God is pulling us together. We want the Pentecostal experience. Yes, on an individual level, but we also need others to benefit. We want the togetherness. Together we stand. Hallelujah. The power of God is able to cause us to be strong and mighty. But remember somebody that is struggling when you're going on. If you see your brother falling by the way, how can you pull him along? And say, it's Holy Ghost time. Hallelujah. It's Jesus time. Hallelujah. It's repentance time. It's time to get closer to God. Glory to God. Don't let anybody, don't let a wounded soldier die. The Holy Ghost inside of us can't allow us i will not allow us to let a wounded soldier die because the holy ghost is love the holy ghost is love it's not about war it's the holy ghost about love the holy ghost is about pulling people together hallelujah in ezekiel the word of god says can these bones live and god the holy ghost cause the dry bones to come alive hallelujah bones come to bones
demons, flesh to flesh, because our God is about resurrection. Our God is about renewal. Our God is about pulling the body together. Glory to God. When the prophet, when he prophesied, the word of God tells us that there was a shaking in the valley of dry bones glory to god bones that were scattered bones that was not connected bones that would not relate to each other bones that, that was perishing hallelujah but glory to god when the prophecy came when the spirit of god came there was a shaking in the valley hallelujah there was a coming together in the valley can these bones live Yes, they can live. Yes, they can live. Oh, our God is the resurrection and the life. No matter where you've gone, no matter how you have drifted from God, you can come alive today. No matter how your life seems pull apart, God is saying, this Pentecost day, I want to pull you together. You're a part of the body. You might have feel so disconnected. Just like in the valley of dry bone. You didn't know where you fit in the body. But God, the Holy Ghost is saying, don't worry. I will fit you together. I will pull you together. You have been wounded. What God is saying, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to pull you together. You're going to get up. You're going to walk. You're going to lift up holy hands. You're going to do the will of God because God is the resurrection and he's the life. The Holy Ghost is about life. Can these bones live? Wherever you are today, God is speaking into your life God is speaking into your life right now your disconnection is about to end God is connecting you right now by the spirit in the spiritual realm God is dealing with you right now the Holy Ghost worked in different ways. Sometimes it's not in the shouting. Sometimes it's not in the mighty wind. But in a still small voice, God is touching your heart right now. God is connecting you. I can see the bone pulling together in the spiritual realm. I can see God pulling you together. Hallelujah. I can see God bringing you into a spiritual consciousness. And God is saying, arise my child arise be filled with the Holy Ghost God loves you it's not his desire for you to stay in the valley of dryness he wants you to be unified by his spirit he wants you to be unified in the body of Christ God doesn't want you to be a lone ranger out there all by yourself. You have brothers in the Lord. Glory to God. You have sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. You have mothers of Zion in the Lord. Hallelujah. You have fathers in the Lord. Glory to God. And God is saying, you're a part of the body of Christ. You won't be a drifter anymore. You won't be a drifter anymore. Come together. The valley of dry bones has arrived like a mighty army. God has renewed you by his power. Don't worry. He's pouring out his spirit even now. He's anointing you even now. Right where you are, just lift those hands in worship. You might be listening to us online. Right where you are, God, the Holy Ghost is ministering in your spirit right now. Stand your feet in the sanctuary. And just lift those hands and start worship the Holy Spirit. Just bless the Holy Ghost right now. Just give God worship right now. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship God. Open your mouth and start giving God thanks. 
being one accord, hallelujah, in this one place. Uh, somebody start giving God thanks right now. You might be in your living room, just lift those hands. Uh, just encourage a person beside you to lift their hands and worship. Uh, God is pulling together his people right now. Uh, the body of Christ uh, is being unified right now. Distance is no separation. Uh, the Spirit of God has no limit. Uh, the Spirit of God is being poured out right now upon all flesh he said your sons and your daughters will prophesy your whole men shall dream dreams receive a new anointing hallelujah hey 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 receive your anointing right now in the name of jesus Receive your refreshing right now by faith, by faith, by faith. It's not by sight, hallelujah. It's by faith. God, the Holy Ghost, is strengthening your faith right now in the name of Jesus. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. God is pulling the body together. He's using unusual circumstances. To cause the valley of dry bone to be resurrected. He's using unusual circumstances to heal families. He's using unusual circumstances to resurrect lives in the name of Jesus. You shall not die, but live, but live, 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 live. You shall not die, but live. Hallelujah. Lift those hands in worship. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray the blessed Holy Ghost will minister, Lord God, in this room, in this room, in this room. And God, right across social media, we pray, Jesus, in everyone's space right now, Jesus, we pray, God, for a breaking. We pray for a melting. We pray for a new anointing. We pray for a refreshing. We pray, mighty God, for repentance. We pray, mighty God, for turnaround. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nazareth. He's here, 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 he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, hallelujah. Touch your life right now, Jesus. Holy Spirit, breathe life into sick bodies, breathe life into dead bodies. Breathe life, Holy Ghost, into dead homes. Breathe life, Holy Ghost, into dead churches. Glory to God. Breathe life, O oh God, into dead boards, Jesus. Breathe life, O oh God, into dead choirs, O oh God. Breathe life, Lord God, into dead preachers. Lord, breathe life into families that have fallen apart, Lord. God, breathe life into marriages right now in the name of Jesus. Breathe life, O oh God, to children who are backslidden, Lord God. God. Breathe life, breathe life. These dead bones shall live. Jesus, Jesus, we bless you right now, God. We thank you as life is breathed in this place. We receive it. Just wave your hands in his presence this Pentecost Sunday and thank God the Holy Ghost. Thank God the Holy Ghost for ministering to you, for ministering to your family, for ministering to your spouse, for ministering to your children, for ministering to your church, hallelujah, for ministering to the nations. We thank you, Lord, even now as we receive your word. Lord, we thank you.